Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started now. Thanks for joining us on another weekly Connect Smart webinar. My name is Jen Coffey. I work on our Pro Services team, and I'm joined by David Ortiz, who you might know from our support team. Today's topic is personal productivity gadgets, and we'll be reviewing kind of what those are, uh, just kind of a general overview of how they work. Uh, we'll review what gadgets are available out of the box in your standard um, subscription, and then we'll discuss some options for custom personal productivity gadgets, some business cases for why you might use those, and uh, we'll also be taking any questions you might have. In addition to that, uh, if you have any requests for personal productivity gadgets that we add to the catalog, by all means, let us know. Uh, you can do that uh, with the GoToWebinar control panel. You can raise your hand to ask questions if you have a microphone. If you don't have a microphone, that's not a problem. You can also type your questions in the chat, uh, and that's just right over there in your GoToWebinar control panel. Please do not be shy. We do want your feedback, and uh, since you are here and uh, clearly interested in personal productivity gadgets. If you do have any specific requests, we will uh, make an effort to go ahead and get those prioritized if we can get those rolled out pretty quickly for you. Uh, but today what we're going to be covering is uh, just the intro, which we're in, uh, the prerequisites, which are pretty straightforward, the documentation reference materials related to personal productivity gadgets. We'll review the gadgets as they are, and then we'll discuss the gadget roadmap and take your questions and hopefully give you some good answers. So prerequisites, pretty straightforward. You're going to need a Connect Smart server with the latest version of Connect Smart. That's going to have your uh, latest uh, gadget catalog included. Now, I do have a few additional gadgets that are not in the latest build that's out. They probably won't be out until Monday. I will have a zip file up with those gadgets, though. So don't worry. You can grab these all. You don't have to wait for that. And uh, you can just get going with those right away. Now, we do have a docs site, uh, docs.connectsmart.com. Uh, that'll have downloads, other content related to today's webinar. If you miss some other webinars, you'll be able to check out recordings of prior webinars. So any files that we reference today, the gadgets we're going to review, all of that will be available there for download for you. And you can always search the docs site for additional content that might apply, but we do try to consolidate it all on the dedicated page for this webinar so you don't have to run around looking for things. Uh, this is just, uh, so there is a dedicated page for the webinar, like I said, and it will have um, all of the downloads and anything we use today. This is one that we did prior to this for the HTML gadget webinar. And then we do have a gallery of recorded webinars available for you to search and browse the ones that we've already recorded. And that is it for my slideshow. I'm actually just going to go ahead and take you over to my dashboard here that I have already put together. So these are some personal productivity gadgets that we have, and there are there's a few that I don't have up just because they overlap a little bit, like tickets last updated greater than uh, X days ago versus my tickets last updated X days ago. Uh, the difference between those two is explained on the doc site, but just as a heads up, that's uh, one's based on just the tickets last updated date. So if somebody changed the service type, added an agreement, changed the contact, and then resaved the ticket, that would count as an update versus idle tickets, which is only looking for time entries and status changes. So that's where uh, you'll find the difference between those two, and you're going to want to choose to use one of them or both uh, if they both meet your needs, but uh, you'll have to think about your workflow and what makes the most sense for your team. But uh, this one is arranged kind of how I would set up an engineer's personal productivity dashboard. Uh, we've got past due activities um, up at the top here. We've got past due tickets. Those are all pretty straightforward. But uh, what these are looking for is they're looking for Jay Coffee here. I'm the logged in Connect Smart user. And it's looking for tickets, activities, anything, hours, time entries that are assigned or associated with the corresponding ConnectWise member ID. So in my case, Jay Coffee happens to also be my ConnectWise member ID. If you did not have a corresponding member ID, or if your corresponding member ID did not match your domain user exactly, uh, you'd actually need to map your usernames to your ConnectWise member IDs, and you would just do that by navigating to C. You're going to go to Program Files, Connect Smart, Bin, and then you're going to look for Username Translation, specifically in this case ConnectWise, 
or Connect.io. So Connect.io and the CMDB are going to be if you're using our data warehouse. ConnectWise is going to be if you're using the on-prem connector. Uh, these gadgets today are the Connect.io gadgets. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And what you would do is you would actually just go ahead and modify this. You'd map JCoffee to whomever it's supposed to be. Similarly, if you were going to test for another user, let's say you don't have any data that applies to you, you could just go ahead and map your name, your logged in user to somebody who would have applicable items like tickets or time entries. Uh, and we do have a doc for that. That is located on the docs site. And if you actually just look for username, if you can type today, here we go. So how to remap usernames with username translations. That's actually going to walk you through it a little more in detail so you don't have to uh, furiously try to take note of what I'm doing here. But we do have a doc shows you exactly what you need to do. Gives you some pointers there. Uh, so the rest of these, a lot of them are going to be pretty straightforward um, as long as you understand what it's looking for. So for activities and tickets, it's looking for who the assigned user is. For the time entries, obviously it's looking for the member who entered the time. And uh, some of these that you may not be familiar with from our standard gadget catalog, uh, you're going to see things like my tickets missing agreements. That's a fairly new one. Essentially, just looking for any tickets where the agreement's blank. Uh, people use that a lot uh, because once you create a ticket and it has no agreement, once people start going and putting time on it, the time doesn't get charged to the agreement if you add the agreement later without you going and manually moving the time to that agreement. And since agreements drive your SLAs, it's very important that you not be working on tickets without agreements most of the time in a traditional MSP environment. So we do like to make sure that we highlight missing agreements um, and get those flagged immediately. We also have something similar uh, that's not based on the logged in user that our dispatchers will use so that ideally there will not be a ticket going out assigned to an engineer before an agreement gets assigned to it. But let's say somebody removes the agreement. Accidentally, it happens. Uh, this is going to go ahead and point out to you if you've got an agreement or a ticket that's missing an agreement. And that is uh, going to hopefully keep you on track with your SLAs. Uh, this one we like over here, this last time entry. So this is one we released, uh, I want to say last year. We had a version of it that was looking for time elapsed since your last time entry. And what this does is it does give you a good way to gauge um, how long it's been, since, obviously how long it's been since you put in a time entry, but the great thing about that is you can then come over here, set a color condition on it or an alert on it, and if I want to know if it's been more than an hour since I've put in a time entry, I'm going to go and change my gadget, I'm going to change my value to the gadget value is greater than 60 minutes. I want to start being concerned, and if it's been longer than, say, let's do two hours, it's going to be a numeric constant, that's 120 minutes, I want my gadget to go red. So you're going to set these thresholds yourself. Did I just open? I just set this to the wrong one. Sorry about that. I grabbed the wrong gadget here. Made it mad. Uh, yeah. Looking for time since last time entry. Where am I not seeing this? There we go. Sorry about that. This guy's in the wrong category. I'll be updated before you know it. I'll update these before I publish the zip file to make sure that these end up in the right category for you. All right, so since I'm in here, I'm going to go ahead and add the alerts just like I did. Go ahead and set it to if it's over 60. We want to see a warning or a threat. I like orange better than yellow, so if I'm not using multiples, I'll probably just stick with orange and red. And my gadget is greater than 120. I want things to look dire. There we go if you put that value in there. All right. There we go. So now we're going to take a look back at the dashboard. And since mine is well over two hours, since I have been prepping for some work I'm doing this afternoon or this evening, I have been working on the same thing all day. And so right now, right now it's showing me the border, but I tend to find that a little bit busy. 
and I clicked back in there. But I really just want to see the border, not the background and the value. That's how I prefer mine. So it highlights this one is needing my attention. And I would do the same thing with my tickets past due, my activities past due, missing agreements, tickets not acknowledged, anything that's an exception. So for exception management, that's a term we use all the time here. Uh, we're going to want to go ahead and set some alerts on it because those are the ones that definitely require action from us. Where some, whereas some of these are not necessarily requiring our attention immediately, they're more informational. And uh, there we go. And then also my most neglected ticket here is um, a little bit different than some of the other ones. It's actually just going to show me some information about the ticket on the face of it as opposed to account. And that one I went ahead and reopened uh, so I'd have something in there that was pretty old. Uh, let's see. So my average hours per ticket the past seven days. So I must admit I have uh, been working primarily on our dev side, so I haven't actually resolved any tickets in our ConnectWise instance in the last seven days, and I failed to do one before our webinar today. But this is actually going to show you blank if no one's resolved any tickets or they put no hours on any tickets that they resolved. So specifically, this is looking for tickets where you've actually put time on them and resolved them. You, the logged in user, resolved the ticket. Then it's going to show you your contribution, your average hours, not the average hours overall on the tickets, just your specific contribution. So if you spent half an hour per ticket, even if the whole team spent three hours on the ticket, you're only going to show the, th the half an hour here. Similarly, if you have no time on a ticket, it just gets excluded from the results entirely. So you're not going to get a very low average just because you have a bunch of zeros. So those do get excluded. Uh, if you have a need for a different version that doesn't do that, let us know. I'm sure we can send one your way. And if you need assistance customizing any of these, of course, we can certainly give you a hand. So does anybody have any questions right now? This one is actually a fairly quick one, really just to review kind of the content that we've got here for the personal productivity gadgets. Okay, looks like Robert has a question. Let me see. Uh, Robert, I have unmuted you, so if you are, uh, if you've got a microphone, you can go ahead and ask your question. If not, you can type it into the control panel. Is this microphone working? Sounds like it, assuming you're well, Robert. <laughs> that is me. All right, so quick question here. So from a a dispatcher standpoint or even a manager standpoint, is it easier now to see everybody's dashboards and not just my dashboard? Uh, if you want to see them set for the individual users, um, the best way to do that is honestly going to be to either swap your username translation out or uh, you could modify them directly to change out the username to point at a specific person. However, if you're trying to see the same kind of metrics across the board, it might be easier just to see the, um, the uh, what am I trying to say here? It might be easier to actually just configure, like say if you're looking to see tickets past due, it might make sense to actually look at the tickets past due by tech or, you know, tickets due today by tech or, you know, group it that way instead of having to go through and try to flip through all of these complete dashboards. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, the tickets by tech is great. Um, I mean, personally, I'd like to see, you know, if a technician, for instance, is, you know, on site or, or maybe on a conference call or something else like this, and maybe they're not paying attention to their to their board that looks like this, set up like this, uh, that we could send a screenshot or something like that and say, hey, what's going on with these, you know, 10 past two tickets or, you know, because the, the dispatcher is, you know, constantly taking a look at, you know, at the board and everything else. And if she could see, you know, exactly what the end users see or what the technicians see, that would be ideal, in, you know, for our setup. Uh, we do have uh, the option to pass a parameter in the URL uh, of the dashboard. So I would need to probably touch base with you after. Uh, but I okay. do know that uh, if you modify... Uh, some of these in here. If you go to the actual parameter itself, so see here the username, a lot of time by the way, it's going to be hidden in here, but in this case it's out here. This will actually let you pass a, a parameter in the URL 
and that could work for you. You could actually set up a number of URLs where you're just sort of forcing a different username and set it to rotate through those instead of um, having to modify each one directly. So technically you could do it, um, you, just need some, you just need to play with it a little bit. And uh, I can touch base with you after, I just need to check with uh, some folks about how difficult it would be to get the multiple URLs doing their thing. Perfect. Just to get them to rotate through. I mean, it'd be easy enough to pull up one and, and just type in a guy's name, but if you're trying to get it to like rotate through everybody or anything like that, it's gonna probably require a little more assistance. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anybody else uh, got a question at the moment? You guys are a very quiet audience today. Okay. Here we go. Looks like we do have one coming in. If I could get my control panel to expand so I could actually see your question. Okay, so it looks like Ray's asking about the name translator. So, Ray, what that is, is uh, we've got a doc here, how to remap usernames with the username translation, which you can find on the docs.connectsmart.com site. Uh, if you just do a quick search for username, you should see it as one of the first results. And there you go. Uh, but what it is, is it's actually uh, right here in this path. So you're just gonna go to your program files, connect smart in the bin folder. It's gonna be a username translation. And you're gonna wanna use that for any of the different providers that you're using. Today we're using the CMDB and Connect.io. Uh, we also have the same kind of gadgets available in the on-prem ConnectWise. Same concept for all of them, depending on which one you're using. So what I would recommend doing is if you're gonna modify one, just modify all three of these. And if you uh, were to build some personal productivity gadgets based on Kaseya or LabTech, you would do the same thing. Uh, we don't have any of those out of the box at the moment though. So if you've got any questions or requests for something like that, we'd certainly entertain them. We just haven't had one or had anybody ask for one yet. So that explain that uh, sufficiently, Ray? Or can I cover anything else there? Or not sure if I'm running too fast here. Ah, very good. Ray says we're all right, thank you. Thank you for the question. So now that we have actually seen uh, a good chunk of the gadgets that are available, um, anybody got any ideas for things that would be useful in your organization that aren't here or that you're not sure how to capture? Well, I think I'm either boring you or you guys can't think of anything. Um, well, if you think of it after, don't worry. You can always just shoot an email to support at connectsmart.com and we will go ahead and get that on the list. Although, if you'd like it to be prioritized, I suggest you think of it now. Uh, that way we can go ahead and maybe knock it out even today and just get it in the zip file for you guys today. So if there's anything your hearts desire, we can go ahead and uh, see about getting that into the zip file that we'll be uploading today and then in the release that'll come out next week. Sounds like everybody is okay with what's already out here. So, like I said, if you think of something after, go ahead, shoot us an email at support at connectsmart.com. We'll get it on the list. We'll get it prioritized with development and let you know where it is on the roadmap. Uh, but right now, these and a few others are currently going to be in the zip file, so you'll get these today. And uh, as you think of more, as we think of more, we'll be adding them into the uh, into the catalog for you. So you guys, thanks for the questions. Uh, if I don't have anybody else raising a hand or asking a question in the control panel, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up here in a moment. All right, guys, you have been...
Lovely. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. And like I said, any follow-up questions, if I missed you, if you missed me, if your keyboard broke or your mic broke, just shoot an email to support at connectsmart.com and we will get you squared away. Okay. Thanks. You guys have a great afternoon. And uh, don't forget, we do have these weekly. So on our doc site, we do have the webinar calendar on the home page here. And we've got a number of webinars scheduled. So next week, we're going to talk about mobile dashboards, how to configure those, the SNAP report designer. We'll be scheduling and managing reports on the 24th. We'll be doing a complete overview of all our products on the 1st of October. And I'm going to show you whatever new content's been added on the 8th. And uh, if you suggest anything for me today, hopefully we'll be able to cover that uh, in that webinar on the 8th. All right, everybody have a great day, and uh, it's been lovely chatting with you, and we will hopefully talk soon. Bye-bye.